Before we discuss the uh, second version of the copy constructor, let's re uh, recall ourselves very quickly about the first version, which allows sharing. So you can see from the copy constructor for the shallow copy, we actually say, for example, this name is assigned to other name. So this will create aliases for the names. You can see the directory over here and the directory over here, they refer to the string objects. Similarly, for the files array, we are also using the uh, shallow copy, using the variable assignment to copy the address. So you can see d, uh, d, d2 the files and also d1 the files, they actually point to the same array over here. So there's definitely lots of sharing. In some way, sharing is good because you can save the space. You're just only copying addresses. On the other hand, for implementing composition, which uh, should not really allow any sharing. In that case, even though it's efficient solution, but shallow copy is actually a violation of the uh, composition. That's something that uh, we, we concluded from the earlier video. Let's now talk about the second version of a deep copy. So now this time we want to do it properly, meaning that at every level, at the level of directory, at the level of file, we want to make sure there's no sharing allowed. But how do we do that? Let's take a look. If you look at the, uh, uh, you can definitely also look, uh, review your slides, but let me go directly to the paper just to talk about everything at one go. So we got a file class. And now this time the constructor over here, you can see we also got a copy constructor for the file. Of course, it, it should be public. And how do we initialize a file from another file? The only attribute we have to copy over is the name. But notice that when we say other than name, we don't simply assign this directly to name because that will create aliases as we saw earlier. So what we do instead is to create a new string object from other than name. So that's really important to uh, achieve uh, composition. And at the uh, level of the directory, let's see what we do. We got this version over here, which will simply create a directory and then also new string, right? Similar. And also we create these files. So this is, uh, notice one thing here. So we got overloaded version of two constructors. So this is not a copy constructor because the parameter over here is not of the same type as the directory, right? It's not, okay? So this one here tells you this is not a copy constructor. Let me just make a notes over here. Uh, let me use maybe just orange. Okay, so this is this one here is not not a copy constructor. It is definitely a constructor, but it's not a copy constructor. Not a copy constructor. Okay, and on the other hand, this one over here would be a copy constructor because you can see other over here has the same type as the class name. So that's why it is a copy constructor. But how do we do that? So there will be several lines of code, but they are conceptually, they're quite easy. But the only thing I want to point out to you syntactically first would be, uh, we can see we simply use this and then we try to say other than name. So what, it, what, what does that do? So this is some syntax that we haven't seen so far, but that one is quite uh, straightforward. Whenever you simply invoke this in the context of a constructor. So this one means, let me put it here, calling another overloaded constructor as a helper method. And which overloaded version are we calling? Because you can see other than name over here is of type string. Let me do it again. So other than name is of type string. So that means we're calling this version over here, right? And that version there is going to make sure the name will be initialized properly to another new string, right? That's something I'd like to show you. And whenever you want to call a helper constructor inside another constructor, you definitely have to put it as a first line uh, in order to do it. You cannot put it in the uh, second line or third line onwards. It must be the first line, right? That's syntactically, I want to remind you. And then we simply go over uh, the files uh, on NOF one by one. Every time we want to uh, create a file, we, we can simply get a source file from others, you know, at a relevant uh, index. And then rather than simply share that particular file, we're actually going to create a new file from the source. And this will actually call the copy constructor over here, which will make sure they got, uh, uh, you have a new file object and also its name is not going to share the name, uh, the screen name. And then after that, we're gonna add a file. 
into the uh, uh, directory. So that's the overall picture. You can see it's definitely different from uh, the version that we saw earlier. I will leave you to really compare and contrast the two different versions. But let me now show you the visual consequence of having this, uh, uh, these two copy constructors at the different levels. Let's take a look. Okay. Again, let's now trace line by line. The first one, let's say we try to do, let's say this one here. We want to create directory D and also we want to add F1, F2, F3. So that one is the same as before, right? You can see D over here, that's the name. And also we got F1, F2, and F3, right? Let me just write a little bit better. F1 and also F2 and also F3. And then we are trying to uh, initialize another directory called D2. That's what we are trying to do. And then the arguments we are passing is D1, right? And because of call by value, right? So D1, we're going to call directory. So this should be the copy constructor version, right? This is the one. And then we want to really uh, make sure we understand about call by value. So this one over here, okay, let me just write a little bit better. What's the best way? Okay, so unavoidably, I have to cross the line over here, but you can think about it is going to refer to other over here. Okay, so this will be call by value. Okay, so this other over here. So call by value is going to make sure call by value that we actually do some uh, reference copy which will be other is assigned to D1. Other is assigned to D1, right? I keep emphasizing about uh, call by value in this lecture. Other will be assigned to D1. And let's now take a look. So what will be uh, other? So D1 is pointing to this object over here. So other will just point to the same objects. So other is also pointing to this object here, right? And let's now execute line by line. When we execute this uh, copy constructor call, right? So this will be call to a copy constructor. Okay, just remind yourself. And then let's now execute line by line. Let me use the blue. Okay, so now let's now see, uh, we simply ca uh, call the uh, helper constructor, which will actually go going to be over here. This dot name will be new string name over here and also we're going to create also another files array so how do we do that what's this the context object is going to be d2 over here so that's a context objects and then we're going to say uh, d2.name so this uh, part is going to be replaced by d2 so d2.name will be assigned to a new string which will come from the name and the name is simply other than name other dot name is d and but we're going to create a new string so the way to visualize this would be first of all d2 it's going to point to this object over here but its name attribute over here rather than sharing like in the case of the copy uh the shallow copy as before but it's going to point to a new string and it's going to be d and again this line here comes from calling the copy uh calling the helper constructor which will in turn create a new string from the name, right? Hopefully that makes sense. And we're also going to create this array over here, right? And that array is going to be also separate. So that so we are already doing something very different from shallow copy. So that one, uh, also, also this will be zero in, uh, to begin with. That will That's going to create an array over here. And that will actually go from zero to 99. So zero, one, and then two, all the way to 99 separate array okay and then let's now move on so now we go to the loop over here so what's nof so the nof over here is implicitly it will be this dot nof what's this since we are considering this particular line so this will be the context object d2 so d2 dot nof is actually zero so if you simply use zero over here to run the loop you are not even going to execute a first iteration because i zero less than zero will just be false so there's a typo over here right i'm going to fix that right now but you should also know if you write your code in this way it's also going to be a bug right so it may not be a bad thing to actually show this to you 
So what should be fixed would be rather than NOF over here, we should really say other dot NOF. I will also modify the slides. I'll fix the slides accordingly as well for you. But you should really know why we have to say other than NOF rather than just NOF. It's really crucial, right? All right, so let's now run the loop. If we try to run the loop over here, uh, I from zero until other than NOF, which will be uh, three over here, right? You can see other is really here. So other than NOF will be three. So we, that means we're going to run three iterations in total, right? Let's now just plan out the iterations. So I is going to be zero, one, and also two. And each iteration is going to follow three steps to set up the uh, uh, attributes for uh, D2 over here. Just don't forget, we are talking about D2, how to initialize it, calling the uh, uh, deep copy constructor. The first one is going to be, we create a source variable, which will be copying the reference of other the files at index i. In this case, the first iteration, it will be zero. So what's really other the files at index zero? It's going to be other dot files and then index zero. It's going to be this object over here, right? That's what we are talking about. So for the first iteration, we are really talking about this object over here. And then it's going to be assigned to source. Okay, it's going to be assigned to source. So source is going to be here. And then the next step is we want to create just another file called nf out of the source. So this is very different from the shallow copy because we want to create a brand new files. And this new file is actually going to call the copy constructor at a different level, which is file. So again, we got copy constructor at two levels, at the directory level and also at the file level. So now for this source, what is what it is going to do is it's going to get its name and then it's going to create a new string out of it. So how do we visualize this? So NF is going to be pointing to some file objects over here. I'm going to draw it here. Some file objects. And then it has the name. And the name is going to be a new string of uh, source.name, right? You can see source, will, uh, again, call by value. So other is going to be assigned to source. Source.name is going to be f1.txt. So it's going to be a new string. So f1.txt. All right, so for the first iteration, you should really know we are really trying to make a uh, copy of other the files at index zero, right? And then the next line, we're going to add uh, by calling this method here, right? That's something that we assume you know how to implement and an NF into the uh, collection uh, of files for D2. And what that will do is it's going to do two things. Remember, for the F file, it's going to add the objects to the array and also, uh, and also increment the counter. So that means at index zero, we're going to point to this file over here and increment the value from zero to one. That's what's going to happen. And we're going to do this for uh, another two iterations. Okay, for the other two iterations, I'll just show you what the resulting diagram should look like. But for the second iteration, we'll copy other the files at index one. In the third iteration, we can copy other the files at index two. And for the second iteration, the source over here is actually going to point to uh, this particular uh, file object over here, right? So for the second iteration, it's going to point to this file for the second iteration. And then we're just going to create uh, that file objects quickly. So this will be the second file for the second iteration and file and then the name would be f2.txt, right? Which is the file, the name for the source. f2.txt, and for this one, we're also calling the copy constructor at the file level. And then we're going to also execute this line again. So it's going to uh, make sure index one is going to point to this file objects over here and increment the value from one to two. Okay, and then for the third iteration, similar, we are actually going to uh, get a source from index two. So index two is uh, pointing to this file here. So that means source is not here anymore. So source will actually move to this particular file objects, right? And then we're going to execute uh, the next two lines. We're gonna create a new file objects. So here, just another file. Of course, that will just be NF. NF is just, so the NF is not here anymore. 
and f will be a file over here for the third iteration and then file the name will just be whatever the name of the source is f3.txt f3.txt you can see so far we have no sharing so far and then index 2 is actually going to point to that file objects over here and then we got to increment from 2 to 3 right that's uh very detailed tracing here, but hopefully you can see how the copy constructor in the case of deep copy will actually work. Let's now try to look at some uh, assertion and let's see what happened. The first one, d1.files versus d2.files. Let's see. d1.files is referring to this array over here versus d2.files is referring to this array over here. So they are not uh, aliases of, of each other. So that's why the not equal to is going to be true. So that's why it's passing. And let's now try to see if we try to modify uh, the file name under a certain directory, is it going to impact the file of another directory? That's a question. That one should be quite obvious if you already see the diagram, but let's see. The two the files at index zero, the two the files at index zero is pointing to this file objects over here and we are modifying that to f11.txt and so f11.txt does that impact for example this first file f1.txt in this case it does not but in the earlier case it would because they point to the same uh, array in the earlier case if you modify this to be f11 it's going to modify both d1 and d2 consequently Right? It's a very important uh, co uh, comparison for you to see. That's why, so now if we try to do, let's say, d1.files at index zero, you can see the context object I arranged, which is d1. So if you try d1.files at index zero, it's pointing to this particular object. So it's not impacted at all by this change over here. Right? So that's why it will still be equal to f1. So it's really important to see this on unchanged this file name is unchanged because of deep copy okay so that's about the uh, detailed tracing for the uh, deep copy constructor and let's now take a look at one exercise and for the exercise i'm just modifying this version of the deep copy here just by one line that's the only one line i am modifying specifically if we look at the, uh, so the copy constructor for the file stays unchanged. But for the uh, copy constructor of the directory class over here, I'm deleting this line over here to call the copy constructor of the file, which we know is crucial. But let's say I deleted it, and then I pass source directly into the app file. So that's what I'm doing. Okay. So the question is, are we still going to preserve the composition? by having this change over here yes or no if yes justify it if no tell me where sharing will be allowed okay pause the video and think about the answer assuming that you thought about it let's now take a quick look okay so this part here uh, again let me just uh, give you some idea about the visualization this part has been done as before okay this one i don't need to bother you and then we're calling d2 uh we are creating d2 by calling its uh, copy constructor directory, right? And then we're using D1 as the argument, right? Pretty much like before. And now the only difference is, so now when we try to execute this, so first of all, this line here is going to make sure you have, uh, so we talk about D2 over here. And this line over here is going to make sure we have a different string objects as the name. That one's good. No sharing on the names of the directory. And then we're gonna uh, go over the loop over here. And as I said before, this part over here should be other.nof, right? That one, I'll make sure it's uh, fixed on your slides, okay? We're gonna go for three iterations. And then for each one of them, we're going to let source point to the relevant index objects for the uh, file, okay? So for the first iteration, source is actually going to point to the first objects from index zero, right? And then we don't have this middle line anymore. That's the, really the change for the exercise. And we're going to say this dot add file just source. 
what's going to happen? For the very first iteration over here, right, when i is equal to zero, what we what we uh, what we'll end up doing is when we say this dot f file over here, what we will say is this. What well, what's this? This is really the context object D two. So we are basically doing D two dot files at index zero, right? At index i. That one is going to be assigned to just the source, rather than the new file that we did in the uh, earlier version. So what would uh, what would that achieve? So source is pointing to this object over here, and now we want to make sure uh, the 2.files at index 0 will point to the same object. Apparently, that allows sharing. Let's visualize it. Of course, I should definitely also visualize this. That's uh, actually done also earlier. Let's have the array over here. So that'll be index 0, index 1, all the way to index 99. Right? So now index 0 over here is going to point to wherever source is pointing to. So that one is going to allow sharing like this, right? That's for the first iteration. And for the second iteration, what we will have is, so now we're going to have one. And also uh, d2.files at index one is going to assign, uh, assign to uh, source. And for the second iteration, source will actually be pointing to this file from index one. So what we will have is, it's now going to point to this object specifically, right? And what about the third iteration? For the third iteration, let's say i is going to be two, right? So now in that case, uh, we got, let's say two over here, index two. And then we're going to point a uh, source, rather than pointing to here, is going to point to this file over here. And then we're adding source into the uh, d2.files. So index two is going to point to this file over here. Of course, in each iteration, you should really update the counter as well. So now after adding three files, it's going to be three. Okay, that one I didn't do uh, uh, exactly seven step, but you should know uh, how, how that should be updated. Right, so after this, do we have sharing? Apparently, yes. Let's now double check it. So if we try to do d1.files versus d2.files, as far as this one is concerned, it's actually fine d1.files and d2.files, they point to different files array. At the array level, it's actually okay. So as far as this assertion is concerned, composition is actually preserved. But let's go further. What if we try to modify the file through one directory? Is it gonna up impact another directory's file? The answer is yes. Because, let's uh, see. d2.files at index zero. d2.files at index zero over here is pointing to just this particular object as we visualize and we want to change that to be f11 if you do that it's going to be f11 and the consequence is so now if we try to say d1 the files at index 0 so d1 the files at index 0 that's also pointing to this particular file the same the aliases of each other so that's being modified to f11 so that's why uh, here you can see this, the, uh, they're simply aliases uh, to each other. So this really allows sharing, okay? So this will be true because of sharing. You can see also the name that's being modified will have impact on both uh, D1 and D2. So that's not really composition, okay? So that's why composition violated. All right, so that's the answer to the uh, this exercise over here. I hope when you thought about doing the pause, uh, it really got similar, maybe uh, uh, along a similar track of thoughts. Okay, so that's about composition. And let's now move on to the next part where we talk about more examples for uh, comparing aggregation versus composition.